السلام عليكم خوتي انا ما كنتم واحد ما جاتوم دائما احنا في هنا اليوم رانا مع خونا عبد الرزاق مواصله للحلقه الثانيه والتي تحمل يس الجيرينز كان سبيك انجلش بارت 2 خويا عبد الرزاق السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام هاو يو ام فاين اوكي فيرست اوف اول اي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ذا هارد ورك يو بوت فور ذا كوميونيتي ثرو احنا في هنا اند اولسو I thank so many people. They read the, uh, they've seen the videos and the comments, and you're welcome. Through connection, we meet again, and again, and again. And hopefully, you've got some questions for me today. Yes, uh, I'd like to right. continue with more questions. Oh, uh, great! It's, uh, not a it's nice from you for answering all these questions. Right. Okay. So my first question: Why do young Algerians risk their lives to come to the United Kingdom and Europe and other countries? Well, this is, first of all, let me just say something. This is my opinion. It's my personal opinion. People are entitled to different opinions. I believe the young people, particularly Algerians, they come to this country for a better life. Uh, they, they escape uh, misery. Uh, no future in Algeria. They come here to improve their lives. Uh, they come here to make money, uh, hopefully to go back to Algeria. And uh, lots of social problems, as you know, in Algeria. Um, economic problems in the country and knowing that probably 95% of the uh, young Algerians they want to escape and leave the country uh, I think that's the main 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 reason why young particularly Algerians they come to the UK uh, illegally basically I'm focusing on those people that come illegally not through a proper visa to this country uh, there are couple there are very minority of Algerians they are They come here to study, but you can't compare them. They're nothing, probably 1% of Algerians. But these people, they have the luxury to pay for the courses. But the ones we're focusing on, they're the ones who actually need some help. So they come here for a better life. As I well, we call in English uh, our, our dialogue, Haraga. Haraga, uh, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. Haraga so, is meaning people like come without uh, uh, documents. And even teenagers, between 15 years, even 14 years, up to 20, whatever, 25 years old. And they're all scattered in... Um, the first point of meeting is, you know, as you know, is Black Stock Road, Finsbury Park. And they meet, they meet the other friends, they meet the other Algerians. Any more questions? Yes, uh, will you tell us uh, the problem that the newcomers uh, they face when they reach the United Kingdom? And how do they cope with the daily problems? Well, quite honestly, one of the main problems is communication skills, which we covered it last... Uh, Uh, like, uh, on the other, um, you know, uh, last time when you interviewed me, they, they, they hardly speak English. Uh, also, the, the job basically, when they come here, before they come actually to this country, they have high expectation that uh, this uh, country is a paradise, they can easily get a job, they can easily get married. So they face problem of communication skills, English language, no experience whatsoever for work, and also. Uh, very hard actually to get jobs you, you, because as you know we, uh, they have to have a proper papers, they have to have a proper documents to work in this country um, even accommodation and um, remembering the language as well the language, accommodation, jobs, the weather, the culture Skills. of course, yeah so there's so many problems when they face when they come to this country they don't know much about um, the culture of this country. So for them, for some, uh, particularly the young people we're focusing on, um, they find um, themselves in a different culture with, you know, Western societies, with Western values and uh, totally a different culture compared to our own culture, Algeria. Uh, yes. How, they, uh, how do they also cope with the uh, culture of the country they host them? Well, quite honestly, it's again the same problem. Um, In terms, um, there's something positive about London. Uh, you know, as you know, uh, diversity of culture. They can still practice their religion. They can still go to the mosque. They can still eat halal food if they want to. But in terms of their, uh, their integration, it's so hard because wherever you go, they need to be able to understand the culture. They, they, they need to be able to speak the language. So... Uh, I find most Algerians, particularly the young people, they, are, they only stick to the, uh, the fellow Algerians. So they do hang around with Algerians only. And for them to have access to information, they need somebody to help them. So it's a cultural shock in general. Maybe uh, they, do, they don't speak a language. That's why they hang with Algerians. Definitely. That's one of the main reasons. And uh, for them, um, 
they won't be able, as I said, uh, be able to communicate with the rest of the world, particularly with the, the people they speak the language. So they rely on their friends or their, I don't know, or the people they meet in the streets, um, Algerians or Arabs. And uh, it's so, uh, quite honestly, I think most of them uh, are, when I met some of them, they were a bit disappointed in terms of, uh, in terms of jobs particularly. Uh, thinking when they come straight away they will get a job full-time job they can save money and uh, they can as, as we said they can marry straight away and it's easy easy everything's easy so you had a lot of the case that's not the case at all yeah you had a lot of uh, meeting with Algerian yeah and you had a lot of job working with Algerian dealing with Algerian yeah what are their views why they are here in the United Kingdom quite honestly in terms of organization as you know it's um, Particularly in London, as you know, it's um, uh, they find things. Uh, the streets are, uh, as you know, they're clean. The system works. The police are polite. Uh, the services they've got transport 24 hours wherever they want to go. The tubes, the facilities in this country, lots of parks, lots of leisure centres. But in terms of life, it's so expensive. In terms of that, so expensive, and in terms of getting a job is so hard in this country. If I give you an example, for example, if, they, if, if, I, if I want to apply for a job, like a cleaning job, for example, and not only I have to have national insurance number, I should have enough experience. At the same time, probably there are 150 people applying for the same job. So, um, so I'll maybe, um, as, as I said, 150 people applying for the same job, I'm, I'm uh, likely not to get the job, basically. It's not just me, I'm talking about, uh, this is just an example, just to illustrate. In general, general. But in general, it's so hard, particularly we've got um, immigrants coming from East Europe, they're taking all the jobs in this country, so it's not easy for them. I mean, they hardly, if they can get, they probably get you know, two, in a month job, and they cash in hand job, and then after that, they... Uh, have to spend the money they, they 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 saved and it's again the same same scenario same scenario so they end up broke skint no money so they ask for friends for support financial support or some some of them they actually sleep rough in the park in the mosque and uh, some of them even they sleep on the buses 24 hours they spend all the night on the buses and it's uh, very difficult it's very sad actually yeah. to see our people suffering in this country where we have all the luxury all the potentiality and potentials in algeria just shame okay as any a more questions yes i have a, a few for you to, all right uh, still okay, another no time yeah so as a married man how do you see yourself in the in the united kingdom quite honestly in terms of the service in terms of the service in this country is quite good for, for my kids but i don't see um i i'm thinking me and my wife whether we have to send our children to be educated in Algeria because uh, you, knowing that uh, child protection in this country children have more, much more power than parents in this country for example my son when he's 15 he can actually take me to the court if I abuse him verbally or physically and it, we, we don't experience those things in Algeria and people don't know much about that actually. Uh, facilities are good for, for children but I want my kids to be brought up educated in Algeria. When they grow up they can come back again here. Yeah. When what, they're 19 uh, or 20. Okay, what do you think about mixed marriage, Algerians with non-Algerians or non-Muslims? Well, quite honestly, this is a, a broad subject and this is only entirely my opinion. I think some of the uh, mixed marriages are, are successful, but in most of the time they're not successful. Why? Because um, basically um, an Algerian or a, woman, a man, an Algerian married to an English woman or a non-Muslim per person, they may actually be okay. And once they have a kid, well, if they have children, so will they, will the children follow, uh, what religion do they follow? Christianity, Muslim, what kind of religion? Are they atheists? So when they have children and the problems start uh, rising, and we've seen so many cases where there are lots of divorce, where kids have been taken by their by, by the, by the, the wives, and um, you know the father has no whatsoever power to actually uh, to actually get the uh, 
the sons back to them or the daughters or back to them. custody for their children. Yeah, custody, custody yeah. always goes to the, uh, the mother. To, to, to the mother in this country. And they don't, the people, they don't know that. And I've seen so many upsetting and sad stories of Algerians marrying um, Polish or English or other nationalities. The best marriage, are personally, if you want to get married, marry from somebody from your country, from the same culture, same religion, so you avoid all the problems, particularly yeah. for the kids in the future. We're talking about the problems of Algerian here. What sort of problems do the Algerian families face in the United Kingdom? I think it's mainly how they bring up their kids. Even this country allows them to practice their religion. They can go to the mosque, they can practice, they can learn Arabic. But again, the uh, child protection, as I mentioned it, the children, if they reach the age of 15, they have much more power than the parents. So that I've seen a lot of cases where the kids or teenagers uh, from um, an Algerian family, even the father is Algerian, the mum is Algerian, but they they um, they reported them to the police, and uh, the the couple, the parents, Algerian parents, end up in one of them end up in jail, and and they end up in court and all that thing. We don't see this um, thing happening in Algeria because we live in a society, a traditional society, where there's a respected parents, grandparents, respect to the uh, society. Um, Compared to here, this uh, this country is very very liberal country when it comes in, when it comes in terms of uh, protection, child protection. So uh, I think this is my main, not just my main concern, the concern of so many Algerians who brought other children in here. Uh, it's not just Algerians, even other nationalities. We've seen forced marriages. Uh, if a daughter she's born in she was born in this country at the age of 14, 15, 16 or 18, she wants to marry somebody from this country. So we've seen forced marriages where you know other communities are forcing them to go back to their own country and marry somebody. And then we've seen the intervention of the uh, the British government to actually uh, uh, do something about. So really, really sad story. So. Uh, I think this is one of the common problems we are facing as uh, immigrants in this country, how to bring up our children. Even they have a better education in this country compared to, um, to Algeria, but still, in terms of... Uh, uh, it's, this, is, this country is a liberal country. They teach them se sex education at the age of five now, and they teach them about um, lesbians and homosexual couples, things like that, which... Uh, for me, and even for conservative English people, they don't like those things. I mean, you teach somebody, a kid, somebody have to, you know, so, I'm not saying, but uh, dirty stuff, uh, that's not acceptable. Uh, not just for the Muslims, even for the Christian Orthodox or Jewish Orthodox. Um, this country is a very, very liberal country. You gamble when, if you want to bring up your children in this country. They could be well educated, they could go and end up in ecstasy or drug uh, addicts or prostitution, whatever. So, for me, the safest way is to bring my, up my children back home.